seven years ago on this spot a group of people changed the history of this country on the 21st of November a group of people took to Madan this is Madan to protest the decision that Yanukovych made about withdrawing from the EU agreement. Ukraine's president Viktor Yanukovych refused to sign up to the free trade deal on offer. And the president of the European Commission ruled out his suggestion for trilateral talks on his country's future to include Moscow. So for a bilateral agreement between the European Union and Ukraine, there should be no trilateral format. The times of limited sovereignty are over in Europe. The decision was to tie Ukraine to EU measures, EU authoritarianism and EU dictatorship. There are reasons why the agreement wasn't signed. The European Union refused to make any concessions to our demands and we don't want to be brought to our knees. We are our proud people. We need to finish our own reforms first and only then can we integrate into Europe and match their standards. However, Western NGOs financed by George Soros and corrupt EU took it upon themselves with the help of the CIA to influence the people of Ukraine. The people of Ukraine were influenced in the fact that they thought joining up to a corrupt political union would be their best future. So they took to the street. For a good nine days, people gathered here, dismayed at the thoughts that they weren't going to be part of the EU. The pro-European rallies are expected to continue throughout the weekend and the students here say they will continue to mount their own protests next week. Unaware that many countries in the west of the EU at this point were growing sick and tired of the EU. Remember it was going to be two years later the United Kingdom would withdraw from the EU. But this is where it began. On the 30th of November, some nine days after the initial protest had started, Yanukovych grew sick and tired of the protesters. This was going to be his downfall. The police gathered over here on a colder day than it is today and right now it is zero degrees, it's cold. These people had already been here sleeping every day for nine days. They were dragged out, beaten and that's where things took a dark turn. but it also changed the mood of the nation. No longer was it just EU lovers and people that wanted to be part of the EU. The whole of the nation got involved and the whole of the nation now at this point realized Yanukovych had to go. The turning point began on the 30th of November 2013. At this point here, just over seven years ago. Imagine this square has now been cleared of all the protesters. After the 30th of November, a lot of people walking away or being carried away to hospital with blood pouring down their heads. A makeshift hospital was built up that hill towards the monastery. Now that St. Michael's Monastery is where we're going to go next. At 9.20 in the morning on November 30th, 2013, activists besieged the St. Michael's Monastery over here. They came up through St. Michael's Square, what you just saw there, dripping in wet rain at the time it was covered in snow. And they came into here and they looked for refuge and they looked for advice from the holy men. The holy men took them in and the holy men accepted them for who they were. And then the holy men throughout this following 82 days or something like 80 days that followed, helped the activists out and helped the maddened cause. The next phase began on the 1st of December when people from all over Ukraine and people all over Kiev gathered once again in Madden. And riots began between the 1st and the 3rd of December. Huge riots. This was cheered on by Western press. Uh, but I'm praising uh, their, their ability and their desire to demonstrate peacefully for change that uh, I think they deserve. Money flowed from the Western NGOs financed by George Soros. 
what I call the old Ukraine. Uh, there is a new Ukraine that wants to be uh, the opposite of the old Ukraine, but the old Ukraine is still there. It's into the hands of the media, into the hands of new startups that sort of encourage the youth, encourage the population to back the revolution. This is where the encampment had begun, 11 days earlier in a way. For the next 92 days, this square would become the focus of the world's attention. On this street, on the 16th of January, people reacting to the clampdown on protests. Suddenly it was illegal to be wearing helmets, suddenly it was illegal to be protesting in cars, there'd been a automobile protest going around the city, slowing down traffic. Suddenly it was now illegal to gather with more than three cars. Suddenly it was illegal to basically protest. So what happened is the people who had been in Madden Square down here decided they were going to take it up with the parliament right up this direction. And they went up this road and they were met, as soon as they got to the top, they were met with resistance. Fighting continued, a huge riots happened, and people lost their lives. And this was going to be the start of one of the bloodiest sort of months on record. There was a point during the siege when the police were running onto the square or battling the protesters on Madden Square, when for the first time since the Mongols invaded Kiev, all bells at this monastery ring out. Never before since then had all the bells been rung. And yet, in the early months of 2014, this rang out and encouraged everyone to get down to Madden. Without the bells of this monastery and without the religious leaders, Madden revolution may not have taken place. Effectively, these people that you see here, these people, every single one of them, until it ended in March, 125 people lost their lives. Some lost their lives to snipers who sat cowardly on the top of the, this building up here. This is the performing arts building up here. Snipers were shooting protesters down here as they were walking up the street. During the peak of the protest, we witnessed this building being burnt down. This was considered the headquarters at the time for the protest movement. This was considered the medical center. Wounded people were being taken here, wounded people were being treated, many people lost their lives. But at some stage, people eventually lost more lives because the building was burnt down and people were having to force out of the buildings. This carried on until the bitter end, until Yanukovych, 92 days after the initial protest began, just here, fled the country and was given asylum in Russia. Madden Square in central Kiev would topple a leader, a fairly elected leader, and put in a leader favoured by the West and a leader particularly favoured by the European Union.